Well, hello, lovely humans, and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Jamie Wolfer. I'm a wedding planner. If you're not new here, welcome back. I'm so glad you're here. I can't decide if I look like I should be married to Justin Bieber or if I just look like a founding father in a sweatshirt and too much jewelry. <laughs> <laughs> but enough about me. In this week's video, we are gonna be talking about how to look out for red flags when hiring a vendor. Um, a couple weeks ago, I talked about why I hated planning my wedding, like why I hated it. And one of the reasons was because I didn't pay attention to red flags when booking one of my vendors and it was very, uh, it, it, it was rough. It was rough and to this day, it still frustrates me, it still makes me mad, and I wish I had someone to tell me this before I plan my wedding. So that's why we're here, because I'm gonna tell you some of the red flags that you should be looking for because I have had personal experience with it and I've watched my clients go through this as well. And luckily, because of my experience, although it wasn't a great one, it did allow me the opportunity to uh, help my clients better spot it and that's what I'd love to do for you guys here today. So without further ado, let's just jump right on into it. Oh, did you think that we were heading to like my normal jingly intro? <laughs> No, we're not. Because today's video is the video that I was going to tell you all about this amazing bundle. So if you were around for last week's video, then you heard me say that we have a special bundle coming up. Well, naturally, we released it to our email list and to our Instagram first, and those stinkers filled up almost every single slot. So if you haven't downloaded my timeline, you're not on our email list, or you're not following us over on Instagram, then you're missing out on getting the news first. There may be a few of the bundles left, so be sure to check out the link below. If you missed getting the bundle or you don't need all those services, you can get 15% off in instead using code let's do this again you can find the link for all of those down below this offer is good through february what what's what is what are your dates this offer is good through midnight pacific standard time on february 16th so if you are holding up the hope that your honey is going to be proposing on valentine's day don't worry you'll still get in on the 15 percent off deal all right be sure to follow us on instagram or download our timeline and get on my email list so i can help you plan your wedding and you'll be the first to know about all of our sales and offerings now back to our regular scheduled programming <laughs> And before we jump all the way straight into this, if you're in a position where you're like, okay, but I already did that, like, I did book someone and now it's not working, or you're saying these things and I'm nodding my head like I've already made this mistake, I do have a video on how to fire vendors. It's, it's unfortunate that I have to make it, but every once in a while there is a situation where that is required. I will link that up here if you guys want to go ahead and check that out. Um, no one wants to have to do that, but it is important to have those discussions if you come across the point where you might have to. The first thing that most wedding blogs will tell you about is response time. Now I will tell you as a wedding professional and and a mom and an entrepreneur with business ventures and stuff and things, sometimes it takes me longer than the standard 48 hours to get back to people. In fact, if you watch back any of my early videos, I said something about like having a 24 hour response time. That's cute. That's cute that I used to be able to do that. And then I started a YouTube channel and things kind of took off for us. So um, for me as a vendor, sometimes it's harder for me to get back in that 48 hour time period, especially when I'm working on a weekend. So most places will be like, be wary of response time. As a wedding professional, I can tell you sometimes response time is rough <laughs> and there most vendors are better about it than I am, which is why we now have a full staff. So if you email us, it's going to be probably one of my staff members getting back to you, to be honest, because your girl, your girl's got a lot going on. But that is something to keep in mind. If you don't get a response from a vendor, then they clearly aren't motivated to talk to you. You should have someone who feels like they're motivated to talk to you. If you get something past the standard 48 hours as a small wedding business owner that has survived the craziness of last year and then like just like the craziness of weddings in general, giving a grace period like once or twice is totally fine. But if you have to keep doing that, then I would call that at that point a red flag. Another thing that, that you should be wary of is inconsistencies between what is said verbally and what is written down either in a contract or in your package brochure. Anything that is written down, you can hold them to. Like, I know we don't want to think about this, but if you, if you were to go to court, you could talk about what is written down. But if it's said verbally and it's inconsistent from what's on the package, what's on your contract, I would be wary of those inconsistencies. If they make verbal promises and you're excited about them or you want them to keep them, ask them to put that into writing, either to send that to you in an email or to add that to your contract and both of you can re-sign that contract so you're both beholden to a new contract or something along those lines because it's well and dandy to say stuff out loud, but if it's not written down as a part of your package or in an email somewhere or as a part of your contract, that's disconcerting to me because I have seen clients go through that and hear something verbally and then not receive that because it wasn't written down. Whether or not that was done with malicious intent, I can't say. I mean, you know, 
sometimes an event will pass from one person to another person's hands within the same company and this person didn't write stuff down and this person's like, I can't promise that. So just those kinds of inconsistencies. If you do see something that's not included or it's not written down in the email, those are red flags for me. Um, th another red flag is if they don't have a contract at all. Now this is just for like specifically wedding vendors. So if you hire a food truck, weddings aren't their main bread and butter. Like they probably go to food truck places where food trucks go. <laughs> I don't even know. But if like weddings aren't their main gig, then they probably don't have a wedding specific contract. Now they might, um, but they might not. What concerns me is if they claim to be a wedding professional and they have no contract at all whatsoever, that's when I go, I don't like that. I don't, I don't like that. In fact, I've told clients before to be like, just tell them, uh, blame it on me as your wedding planner. Just tell them, be like, hey, my wedding planner really wants us to have a contract, so I just wrote something up really quick if you wanna, you know, if you wanna just mind signing it just so like I can appease my crazy wedding planner, I'm giving you permission to do that. If you wanna call me your wedding planner with a vendor who's not giving you a contract, you can say, hey, my wedding planner, Jamie, said I have to get this from you. Now, they may be confused when I'm not there on your wedding day, or I am, <laughs> if you wanna hire me, okay. But I wouldn't enter into, I would take caution. I would see it as an, an orange flag board red orange uh if they don't have contracts now again if weddings are not their main bread and butter they probably don't necessarily have one but if you're entering into a relationship with a photographer who doesn't have a contract that's the problem in my opinion now a lot of times people are like oh it's my friend um i would then suggest going to watch the hiring a friender video because i still think that there needs to be a paper trail regardless of how close you are uh you could be blood relations i still think having a piece of paper so both of you know what you're committed to is very important for maintaining maintaining boundaries and knowing what deliverables you're going to get out of this working arrangement. Next up, be wary of poor reviews. Generally speaking as a pro, just so you know, like reviews are very hard to get. <laughs> like I, well, one, I forget to ask for them, uh, which by the way, if you ever want to review what we're doing here on this channel, you want to do it on the wedding wire or the knot, you totally can. Cause I'm, I'm basically like your planner, right? You want to boost our reviews? Cause I don't think we have that many. We've done a ton of weddings. We just, I'm really bad at asking for reviews. So if, if we've ever worked together, if you've ever watched one of my videos and you like what we do, go review us. Okay, thanks. <laughs> I'll link it down below if you feel like it. But if you see bad reviews, one is not a death sentence, okay? Four is telling you something. So I would just generally speaking steer clear of, of, of a venue or a vendor that has more than one bad review. But if you are really committed to trying to make this relationship work, there's a reason that you really like the space, this person, this company, ask them about those reviews. Ask them to respond and how they respond and what they say will be very telling. If they feel genuine and, and they're like, yeah, it just makes us really sad. We did everything we could to salvage that relationship. And unfortunately they still left that review. Then you can see their hearts and their intent behind it. Um, but if there's a bunch of them, run, please run. Like they're not going to be, it's like dating a bad boy. Okay. They're not just going to change their stripes just for you. If, if, if it walks like a duck and it talks like a duck and it has bad reviews, then don't hire them for your way. <laughs> Next red flag weird payment policies. If they require cash only, or if they require payment all at once, I don't like that, okay? Like now, some vendors may go up to 50% deposit. That's perfectly normal for some. Uh, some maybe do 10%, 20%, or like a set amount. That's all good and dandy. But if they require you to pay by cash, I don't like that so much. Um, that, that's, that smells fishy. That, that's, that's shady to me. And, or if they require you to pay way super far in advance or all at once, that's not normal. So I just want to let you know, uh, if it feels like a weird payment thing, it probably is a weird payment thing. I suggest making these payments through some sort of avenue that you can track. It could still be Venmo. It could be check. Um, it could be a credit card or debit card. But most of the time I recommend like just, just making sure you have a paper trail. And if you do decide to pay with cash, then get receipts, please. Please get receipts or like money paid invoice. Next red flag, okay, um, is a lack of online presence or a very dated one. I'm not quite sure what the statistic is and I'm, so I'm totally gonna butcher this because 90% of statistics are made up on the spot, but like a generous amount of, cl of couples, clients, um, find vendors based on their web presence. I, as a wedding vendor, know that I have to have an Instagram I know that my website has to look bomb, which by the way, we have a rebrand coming up and it's gonna be so cool. It's gonna be so pretty. And I need to show that I'm active on those avenues. So um, if my website looks like it was done 20 years ago, like most people aren't gonna want me to plan anything that has to do with any sort of aesthetic for their event. I'm aware of that. 
so are most other vendors. So if you stumble across a website that feels like it hasn't been updated since 1992, that's a, that's a red flag for me. That tells me that they may be out of touch with what weddings look like today, um, or they're just kind of generally out of touch with how weddings are done, because they've changed so much over the last 10 years. Ever since 2008, honestly, when the, the recession hit and bubble burst and whatnot, like, weddings have changed and taken a different shape, especially after 2020. You want someone who's up to speed on everything that's going on, okay? So finding someone who doesn't have a web presence at all means, like, they don't understand how the game works, um, and or has a very dated-looking one, means they don't understand how the game works. Next one would be radically different rates. Like, they should be charging $3,000, but they're charging one. And the only way you'll know that is by doing research and by talking to a wedding planner that you're working with. Like, you can't, obviously, you don't know the numbers off the top of your head, which is why I do recommend that you jump around and you do your research. Uh, but if they're $2,000 less than the other guy, you need to start asking some questions. They either aren't fulfilling the services that they should be fulfilling that you're expecting based on what you want out of this vendor, or they don't know what they're doing. Um, I, this, it sounds kind of harsh, but like, it's pretty easy for me to tell if someone's new to the industry based off of their price points. So if I come across a videographer who's only charging $800, I'm like, first year? Probably. And again, there's nothing wrong with hiring inexperienced vendors. Um, you just need to know what you're getting into and have in-depth and very detailed conversations so you don't feel like you're getting gypped or you missed out on something because you booked someone who didn't have the same experience as someone who's been doing this for 10 years. We are not knocking the new guy. We're not knocking the cheap guy. But you do need to ask the question, why? Why are you this much cheaper? Why are you so much less expensive? Are you cutting out some of the quality items that I feel like I want? Or are you newer to this? We want someone who, can, generally speaking, has a little bit of an idea of what they know that they're doing um, and not totally flying by the seat of their pants. And last but most certainly not least, the last red flag is not feeling heard or understood. Like, if you just feel like you are being ushered along like a cattle call, um, or you're being talked over, or your design is being mocked, or made fun of, or glassed over, or misunderstood, or misinterpreted, a, a good vendor should be using active listening. Here's what I hear you saying and repeating back to you what it is that you want, so you know that they have heard you. If you feel ashamed or embarrassed by what you want, that's not right. In my opinion, that's not okay. I think I think if you're paying someone thousands of dollars to help you navigate one of the best days of your life, you should feel heard and you should feel understood. You know, God gave you that gut for a reason, friend. So if something doesn't feel right, walk away. Because I can, I've seen clients not necessarily listen to the flags. I haven't listened to the flags myself. And we've had unfortunate circumstances happen because of that. So my encouragement to you is just keep these in the back of your mind. We are not out to accuse or guess that every single vendor is gonna be bad, but it is super important to make sure that you kind of filter through some of these um, so you get the best bang for your buck and the best vendor for your wedding day. So that's all we have for this week's video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't done so already, subscribe. Get on down there. Come on, road to 100K. Let's make it happen. Um, if you want additional support. Of course, as always, you can find all of that in the description box below because I adore you guys and I want to help you in as many ways as possible. And until next week, bye guys! Mm -hmm.